This video is brought to you by Ground News. Today, there are renewed tensions between Venezuela and Guyana. Macron says France could have stopped the Rwandan genocide, and following US pressure, Israel reopens an aid crossing into Gaza. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Friday, the 5th of April, 2024. Tensions are rising yet again between Guyana and Venezuela after Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro signed into law the results of the December referendum that saw Venezuela lay claim to two-thirds of Guyana's territory. We've made a number of videos on this subject, but in short, the oil-rich territory of Essequibo, which makes up two-thirds of Guyana, has long been claimed by Venezuela, which asserts that the border was unfairly drawn up more than a century ago. In December, Venezuela held a referendum asking Venezuelans if they approved the incorporation of Essequibo into Venezuela, rejecting the International Court of Justice's jurisdiction, rejecting the existing border, and more. According to the government, more than 95% of voters said yes to the question. In the latest event in the ongoing dispute, President Maduro tweeted on Wednesday that the decision on December the 3rd has now become the law of the republic later tweeting that, sooner rather than later, we will recover Venezuela's rights to Guyana Essequiba. So I swear, and so it will be. The Guyanese government, which has vehemently rejected any claims by Venezuela to the territory, condemned Maduro's latest move, saying, this attempt by Venezuela to annex more than two-thirds of Guyana's sovereign territory and make it part of Venezuela is an egregious violation of the most fundamental principles of international law. Guyana's government also said if Venezuela wants to contest title to the territory in question, the proper forum is the International Court of Justice. For reference, Guyana took the question to the International Court of Justice in 2018, asking the judges to formally rule that the border, defined in 1899, is legitimate and binding. However, a ruling isn't expected before next year. There was an attempt to defuse tension in the immediate aftermath of the referendum, with a meeting in mid-December between Guyanese President Erfan Ali and his Venezuelan counterpart that saw the two agree not to use threats or force against each other. However, tensions seem to be on the rise again. It remains unclear exactly how Venezuela plans to actually exercise its proclaimed jurisdiction over Essequibo, though Venezuelan authorities have been accused of building up their military close to the border. Amid the territorial dispute, Guyana has sought to restructure and boost its military, while also increasing defence cooperation with its allies like the United States, France and the United Kingdom. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. This Sunday, French President Emmanuel Macron will acknowledge France's failure to stop the Rwandan genocide on the 30th anniversary of the start of the disaster. In a video message to be published on social media, Macron will say France could have stopped the genocide with its Western and African allies, but that it did not have the will to do so. The Rwandan genocide, which began on the 7th of April 1994, saw the mass murder of an estimated 800,000 people, mostly of the Tutsi ethnic group, over a period of three months. Despite the scale and brutality of the campaign causing worldwide horror, the international community largely ignored it, and the major powers of France, Belgium, the US and the UN chose not to act. France, which had maintained close ties with Rwanda under its France Afrique policy, was criticised for limiting its involvement to evacuating expatriates and high-profile government figures, leaving Tutsi family members to likely death. In May 2021, after the Rwandan government published a report concluding France was responsible for enabling a foreseeable genocide, Macron visited Kigali and began new efforts to improve relations. According to the Elise, his speech on Sunday will reiterate the duty of remembrance, in particular through the education of younger generations in France. International pressure has been mounting on Israel after it took responsibility for a strike that killed seven employees of US-based charity World Central Kitchen, or WCK. Western leaders reacted by condemning Israel's military tactics and direct targeting of aid workers. Last night, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had a tense phone call with President Joe Biden, and it's been reported that Biden threatened a change in US policy towards Israel's offensive in Gaza 
and that this change hinges on Israel addressing the suffering of civilians and safety of aid workers there. White House spokesman John Kirby further said that the US wants to see Israel announce changes in the coming hours and days. As a result, early this morning, Israel agreed to open the Erez crossing to increase the flow of aid getting into northern Gaza. So far, no aid has yet been reached in the north, and where 210,000 people are on the brink of famine. Aid groups have also struggled to deliver supplies to the north in the past weeks because of Israeli restrictions and aggression. So nearly all aid which has been delivered so far has come from the south at two main crossing points, Kerem Shalom and Rafa. Attempts by aid convoys to deliver aid from the south to the north have been unsuccessful so far, as routes are either damaged by Israeli bombardment or are blocked by the IDF. The office of the Israeli Prime Minister has said the Erez crossing will be temporarily reopened to prevent a humanitarian crisis and is necessary to ensure the continuation of the fighting and to achieve the goals of the war. On Thursday, the Danish military was forced to close one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, the Great Belt Strait, because of a risk of falling missile fragments, following the malfunctioning of a missile launcher during a naval exercise. The military said in a statement that during the exercise, the missile launcher had been activated and could not be deactivated, warning that until the booster is disabled, there is a risk that the missile could launch and fly several kilometres away. As such, the airspace and maritime area was closed down, with the danger area estimated to extend up to 5-7 to seven kilometres from the Corsor naval base. After about six hours, the important waterway was reopened after military specialists investigated and established that the booster was not armed and that there was no longer a risk of the missile being launched. But this is actually the second embarrassing story for the Danish Navy this week. Earlier this week, General Fleming Lentfer was dismissed as Chief of Defence for what was called a breach of trust, in which he failed to report to the Defence Ministry a malfunctioning weapon system on a Danish warship operating in the Red Sea, as part of the mission to protect international shipping from Houthi attacks. And finally, in some uplifting news, keyhole eye surgery has successfully reversed blindness in a three-year-old girl in the UK. The gene therapy treatment involved keyhole surgery to inject healthy copies of a gene into the patient's eye. Three-year-old Khadija Chowdhury had been diagnosed with a rare genetic condition that causes blindness, and she'd become just the fourth person across the world to have received the treatment at a specialist children's hospital. Now, Israel's reopening of the Erez crossing has been covered extensively by more than 130 news outlets across the political spectrum. 28% of the reporting is coming from the left, and 31% is coming from the right. These insights are all possible thanks to our sponsor, Ground News, a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. For example, on that story about the Gaza aid crossing, not only are you able to compare the political bias and headlines, but you can even check the factuality information and the ownership. At this point, our viewers are well aware of our appreciation of Ground News. It's such an incredibly useful platform that captures information you can't get anywhere else. And best of all, they're currently offering 40% off their Vantage plan, which comes with unlimited access to all of their features. So go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link down below to sign up for only $5 a month and help an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.